Welcome back to another video from BSB. Today we're going to be talking about the left front in our little series, our little mini series of suspension, you know, right front, left front, right rear, left rear. Uh, today we'll be talking about the left front. Uh, but before we get started, let's, let's take care of a little business here. Let's uh, help us out a little bit by subscribing to our channel, liking our videos, commenting. Commenting is very important because it gives us dialogue. Uh, I, I want to do it more for for you and me and future viewers than I do for you know the YouTube audience or the YouTube channel. Uh, but if you could subscribe, like our channel, ring the bell, this will draw more people to our channel. It'll allow YouTube to share it out amongst the people, okay? And that's what we really want to do. We want to teach and share and have a better place to race. So this is growing our race community, okay? So now let's get back to it, the left front. If you watch the right front video, you'll remember that we started out the right front. We're talking about a USRA uh, BMOD uh, car. That's the scenario we're using for our, our, our setup. The... Um, Similarities between a stock car, uh, B mod, A mod, street stock, or even a mod light, the principles are all going to be the same. Okay, the spring rates and maybe the valving or the zero point in the valving is going to change because of the car, because of the spring rates. But in this scenario, it, it does pass through. Okay, since we're talking about a car with no bump, you know, a non bump stop car is. It's typically what we're talking about here. Left front. On our right front video, we started out with 550 um, spring in that car. So on this side, we're going to go with a 600. Okay, so in the left front, we're going to start out our spring rate, 600. And the reason that we're going to do this is because it's a starting point, and it's heavier than the right front, okay, which will help the left front to turn into the corner. If we find out during our setup process that we need to change the left front, we don't always do it in relationship to the right front. Um, if for some reason the right front's working better than normal or better than maybe it should, then we'll deal with the left front as the left front. But the old uh, rule of thumb, you know, that we got to have a 50 or 100 pound split between the fronts, um, you know, it doesn't always apply. And in this case, we're going to, we're not, that's not exactly how we're going to do it. But in this scenario, we're 550 on the right front. We're 600 on the left front. Okay. Right height. Right height on the left front is going to be seven and seven eighths. Um, I know you guys are running lower right heights. And I know the performance of running a lower right height has been better. But in this case, let's start out normal. Let's start out at a standard right height. Lowering our right height is a crutch, or as I call it, a racetrack fix. Something that you do at the track because um, you just ain't got no other tools to use. But here, we're talking about setting up a car initially, getting it out on the racetrack, turning laps, and making it work, okay? So we're talking about a 7 and 7 eighths right height. Um, this is pretty common, seven and three quarters maybe on the right, seven and three, seven and seven eighths on the left. Um, but a pretty common right height. We may lower the right height later, and when we do, we'll cover why, okay? Wheel offset, wheel offset on the left front. It's gonna be a two, two off. Um, over the years, we've done wheel offsets, we've done wheel spacers, uh, we've done things to change the car, tighten it up, free it up. Uh, but in this scenario, let's start with a two off, no wheel spacers, uh, keep it pretty standard over there. Wheel load. Okay, setting our wheel load. As we spoke in the first video, we're not looking for a wheel load number that's magical. Okay, so if your buddy's giving you a wheel load number to shoot for, I, I say, I say, let's just not do that. Let's establish our own wheel load number. We got the car sitting at right height, right front, left front, the car sitting square, right rear, ready to go on the scales. We can take our load number. 
we'd probably do it after we scale the car, but we can take our load number and establish our own number. So with the car the way we want it, <clears throat> get the car um, on the level <coughs> and set the load on, on the left front. And this will be our load number. This will be where we start. Uh, we're going to make adjustments from there. It's kind of like scaling a car. It's not necessarily just set in gold, but we're going we're gonna to start here with that load number. That load number is generally going to be bigger than um, our right front load number, as, as is our scale number. Uh, it's probably going to be bigger. Uh, generally, your right left front is going to scale out, you know, 100, 150 pounds heavier than your, your right front. And we don't want the right front to scale out that low either. Um, toe. Toe. I am going to set toe on the left front. So once we get the steering locked off, we're going to put a quarter to three-eighths toe in the left front. It does make it hard to, harder to line your tires. Um, but with the proper tools, we can take care of that. Or we can just put the toe back to zero. Make sure our left side tires are aligned properly. Uh, you could space them out and maybe touch it at the hub and the rear hub and check that alignment on a spot check. Uh, there's other ways to spot check the rear of your car after you have it established. But we are going to run quarter to three-eighths toe, and we are going to put it on the left front. Shock valving. Okay, here again, shock valving um, can be very critical. And... The left front is really overlooked, and currently there's two options there. Uh, the option that we choose is to have rebound in the left front because we are trying to turn the car through the corner the whole way. Um, we're not trying to get the car into the center on the nose and get the car off on the right rear. We're going to turn the car in on the nose, and we're going to turn, keep the car turning on the left front. So we want rebound on the left front, okay? Um, we typically start at about a six. On a B mod, it would be a six. On other cars, it's going to be higher. Uh, left front rebound's very important. Okay, that's the option we choose. The other option, and we'll cover the rebound a little more, but the other option is to have compression in there. So that compression, you know, is loading the right rear on exit. Well, we're sacrificing the car's speed to fix the right rear. Okay, without fixing the right rear. So if we have a problem on the right rear that we're losing our load on the right rear before we run out of corner, then we need to go over there and fix it. And compressing up the, the left front isn't the way to do it. Um, putting the left front tire on the infield berm is a racetrack fix. And it, and it can be um, successful at doing that. But then you come out going thinking, hey, maybe that worked well. We should put compression over there. I, if you want to do them things, we can do it. You know, I've always said that this isn't my way or the highway. This is us working on your car to make a better, uh, you know, big picture. Uh, if you come into it saying, man, I want to have 300 pounds of compression at 10 inches and 150, 200 pounds of gas in the left front, and you want to try it, we'll try it. But I'm going to advise you against it because I don't think it's the fastest way around the racetrack. In this scenario like IMCA A mods or a USRA B mod, we're talking about a low horsepower car that needs to rotate and carry speed because that's what it will do best. Not make drive, not make right rear. We're not going to squat the right rear. We're not going to drag the motor down doing it. We're going to rotate on the front tires, which will be a little bit of freer car, but it'll be free and fast. And that's really what we want, speed. So left front is going to carry rebound. It's going to carry low speed rebound. We're going to give you a call out of the left front 1-40. That's our starting point. It's about a six rebound. Uh, it's called the left front 1-40 backslash 160. Um, it's a very good little tool uh, to, to run, you know. So and, and and we have variations of it clear through the Gorilla Fist family. So the left front does need rebound in it. Um, chain chain slack on the left front here again if we need you know i say put a chain on the left front because when you need it you need it and when you need it you must have it 
So have a chain on the left front. Um, the tightest you want that chain is probably an inch and a half. Uh, it, you know, it doesn't, it's going to put load to the right rear. And then the moisture can make a car very tight. Okay. So you, typically in the moisture, we're freer than that. And typically in uh, slick, we'd be at about one and a half plus. Okay. We're not looking for that chain to carry this car. We're looking for that rebound to carry this car. And I feel like when the when the car hits the chain on the left front, the rebounds job is over because the car's ability to turn has virtually gone away or will go away. Okay, the car must continue to turn uh, on the right front, and to compensate for it, we'll tell the car out more. So we, then we burden the right rear, and this slows our speed down. So a chain is a part of the left front, and it's a part we're going to have. So we can use it when we need to use it. If we find ourselves becoming uh, dependent on the chain or, you know, relying on the chain, then we need to uh, start getting the front of that car sorted out. You know, we start needing getting that left front figured out and making the left front work like it needs to. It might be a right rear spring issue that's allowing us to over compress that's pulling the left front. But regardless of what it is, we need to resolve those issues so the left front can work properly throughout the corner. Uh, yes, on on the on the left front, that does cover us on our subjects or items that we chose to talk about in these four videos. Um, the left front is important. We overlook it a lot, but it's very important. And it is one of the bigger tools, the left front, the right rear, are the tools you're going to use to get the car center off. Okay, the right front, left front are the tools we're going to use to get the car into the corner. Um, I think when we get done here, then we're going to cover more um, valving videos and then maybe some uh, a video of what I call five minutes of the corner. Uh, every five minutes of the effect of the shock springs, rebound, weight transfer, uh, what the driver should be doing, what the car should be doing. So if you have questions, you know, text me. Uh, you, you can use Facebook Messenger. You can call us at 620 326 3152. Um, email us, uh, you know, go to our websites, bsbgofast.com, bsbshocks.com. If you have questions, uh, you know, you can look up the product, whether it's bird cages or shocks or springs, uh, you can you can view them. For team members, we're going to start maybe doing a little more lengthy videos on valving options and stuff like that just for the team members so if you don't know what I'm talking about with the team members go to our website bsbgofast.com and homepage will be a, a team bsb click on it you can read about the membership you can join right from that page you can sign up and pay for it all from, right from that page but um, this is left front suspension video for the left front um, as always, I thank you for being here and being a customer. Don't forget to subscribe and like the videos. Hit the notification bell. Uh, it'll help us uh, grow our channel. But as always, God, guys, God bless you. We love you. We'll see you at the racetrack.